may as well record. Okay. So yeah, so I've been going through this process of really peeling back to find out what it is that, that I personally in my life really, really wanted to be doing because there were, for some reason, the marketing, the marketing strategy, even open source marketing, stuff that I've been really passionate about, um, didn't seem to be that fulfilling. And so, you know, what I've been looking at is all these different things that, that, that I've been passionate about, um, trying to find the common thread, and then really feeling increasingly over the last year or so that, that I'm right on my path. It, it feels like where I'm meant to be, what I'm meant to be doing. Work just is fun, doesn't feel like work. Um, and it, it, for me, what I'm actually about is, um, <clears throat> as I said in quite a long video, the, the thing that, that I noticed that I've been really, really most passionate about in regard to marketing and marketing strategy has been when you get to the real nitty gritty of what a brand is, or what a, particularly when you're talking about personal branding. Um, you know, who are you to the world? What do you stand for? What's your vision? What's your purpose here? Um, what can people rely on you for? And then how can we take that and crank it right up to 11 and you know, be the most um, magnificent thing that you can be? Sorry, we're still having the technical trouble getting the other two guys online. Um, so what else can I do? Okay, cookies, I think. Um, so, and, and that's it. So, you know, more than... Um, more than just like how do we make money right because you know that's, that's become less and less relevant to me personally over time it's, it's been about you know the the total 360 degree satisfaction that you can get from um discovering because and th this is really important so what, what we're talking about is we called it the path for a reason and it's not the path Right, it's your path that you're that that is within you, and if it's like you know your your soul or your deepest purpose has a compass bearing, that it, it feels like at different times in your life you are supposed to follow, right? So it's it's not a case of you wander off your path. It's not a case that you have to find it. You're on it, right? You um, you've been on it since. The beginning right and the thing is that what we what we all do what I'm sure we've all done in, in life at different times um, has been uh, one second we've maybe been living in the past we've maybe been repeating stuff that just is is a small version of what we can be what we can achieve so what this program is it's a four-week program um one second i'm doing um technical support at the same time four-week program that really breaks down in steps this this process of how you might be able to each of us might be able to um discover the the path that we already have inside of us right and to take steps not just to you know keep walking but to you know to to travel as high as you can to achieve the most that you can possibly achieve and that to the achievement then what what we're trying to achieve is the thing that is most important to you now weirdly the um I had an experience, I was away with a few guys uh, a year or so ago, and um, I wrote a number on the board, which is a kind of, I wrote 250,000 pounds as a kind of um, revenue goal for the following year, because these, these guys were all into you know, being entrepreneurs and earning as much money as possible, and um, they were kind of saying to me that my 
journey that I've been on of earning less, living more, having more time, having more fun, doing more stuff myself. Um, they, they were a bit disparaging about that. So I, I put this target on the board, a um, bit of peer pressure. And uh, then this guy, Andy, just said to me, well, what would you do if I gave you 250,000 pounds now? And without thinking, right, without thinking at all, the word eco village came out of my middle, right, my solar plexus, my stomach. It just came out. And I don't know, I don't know where it came from. But it, it's almost like some kind of automatic, you know, thing. It's just it's a, a visceral response, right? And um, so what's happened since then is that I've started actually designing um, the, a, an off-grid house. Right. This is, this is the thing that inspires me that I'm more passionate about than, than any other thing, right? In addition to what we're doing now, which is the, the idea of, um, you know, helping other people to, to, you know, really own the journey that you're on. Does that, does that make any sense? You feel free to type in there. The other thing that I can do as well is um, add you guys as panelists so you can come onto the video and ask any questions as well. But I'm just going to try one more um, attempt to um, to get Sharon and Eric on board. Apologies for the barking dogs. I'll just shut the door for you. Okay. So the, the reason that I really, really want Sharon to be on this call, so there's, there's three facilitators, right? There's me in the UK, there's Eric Jones, who is in the Philippines, and um, yeah, Tony's saying, we'd love to build an earth back home in this call. And we've got Sharon Small, who's in California. So we really are, make a triangle all the way around the world. Um, Sharon's special power is this thing called clean language which um, I hope you're going to be able to experience for yourself. Um, if we can get Sharon on board, um, she may even be able to just dial in. Um, we'll see. Don't know why it's, don't know why it's not working. Um, so clean language is, is incredibly important, and the reason it's important is because my conviction is that we already have the resources that we need. We are, we're born with the resources or we're given them in, in our life. We, we are capable. We have what we need to step into the life that we truly would most like to enjoy right now. Um, I, I believe that we know what it is, even if it's not conscious, like that thing that just came out of me, Eco Village. Right, that, that somehow represents so many things for me. And when I look back, I can see the threads of that thing, that idea, this, this off-grid home from childhood, really from childhood. There's, um, and, you know, these are steps that we can do. Um, you know, looking back, I, I've had images from childhood, teenage life, adult life, all the way through, there are certain things that have just burned themselves in my memory. And they all, in, in some way, each of those things informs what I really want to be doing, designing and building this house. So, you know, that, that's, that's my idea. Um, yeah, these guys just don't seem to be able to... Um, Don't seem to be able to join in, and I don't know why. Uh, okay. Um, so you have the resources. So clean language, that's what I was talking about. So a little bit split attention here. Um, clean language is a method of facilitating somebody else right 
So you could use it for coaching. You could use it in a therapeutic context. You could use it for mediation. You could use it for negotiations. So anywhere where um, a facilitator can help assist somebody to be clear, to communicate, to understand, right? And um, the reason it's called clean, this dates back, originally started in the mid-1980s. Okay, so it's only about 30 years old. Um, the reason it's called clean language is because the, you basically, you keep a space, you maintain a space for the client, whoever it is, or clients, and the facilitator does not invade that space. They don't inject any of their thoughts, ideas, concepts, metaphors, their interpretations, nothing, right? That space is, is like a bubble around you. Um, and what they do is they, they work with a, a fixed set of a dozen core key questions, okay, um, which assume nothing. They're completely open. They're not leading. But they can help you to express more about um, whatever it is that, 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 you, that you're talking about, right? So... Very often, the, um, the context of a clean language session or symbolic modeling session. So basically, modeling is you're constructing a model, you're building a model that helps you to understand something, right? So you see we have models of what an atom looks like. That's just something that helps you to understand how atoms work. You have a model of you know, the um, periodic table is a model. There's all kinds of models that we use in life, okay? So symbolic modeling is a way of mapping out the way that you work. So instead of the way the universe worked or chemicals work, it's the way that you work. And what we use as the raw material for that is symbols. So we use metaphors or um, concepts, ideas, any words, but they, all those words, all that raw material comes from the subject, comes from the client themselves. So you know, a clean trainer would very often start by uh, defining the desired outcome from the clean session, which is generally comes from the, the classic, very core clean question, what would you like to have happen? All right. And by the way, everyone who participates in this program, um, we will, everyone will get one or two, hopefully two, one-to-one -one, uh, symbolic modeling sessions with Sharon. Sharon is the the only person in the United States who can uh, award international qualifications in clean language. She's one of the most qualified people in, in the whole world at, at this stuff. So you'll get a couple of sessions with Sharon, one near the beginning, which will help you to identify for yourself what you most would like to have happen in your life. And then later on, we can revisit that and also use the techniques for um, mapping out what needs to happen in order to enjoy that, in order to manifest it. Um, so there's clean questions like, what would you like to have happen? And then you might say, yeah, well, no, I, I can't do this session. I, I, I don't want to do this live because I'm not a qualified clean practitioner. Okay. Um, if Sharon and Eric can get on board, then... Yeah, Sharon may be able to uh, take you guys through something. Um, I hope you guys aren't too distracted by dogs barking in the background. There's something exciting happening in the house, obviously. Um, so it's very interesting. And there's a, a video that I posted yesterday that actually has the recording of a live symbolic modeling session with a guy called um, Eric, who, different Eric, who had no idea that that's what we we're going to do. He just volunteered to step in, and we did it. And it was in incredibly powerful, incredibly intimate. Um, so I do really recommend that you guys uh, do that. If anyone wants to uh, jump in, if you want to come on video and ask any questions, uh, you know, free to do that. I can, I've uh, got a button to promote you to panelist if need be. Um, so just, uh, yeah. So Sharon's now with us in spirit, but only on the phone. So, that's just totally bizarre. Um, I, I don't know what I can do. I don't know what I can possibly do. Um, 
Sharon, do you let me try a different email for you, and I will send that as a panelist invitation, right? Um, and then try clicking that one. Uh, so let me. Sorry about the uh, pause, guys. Yeah, it'd just be great to actually have you live online as well, because nobody wants to listen to me for that long. I know that. Um, so, Sharon, if you just give me your Gmail address or something like that, I will I will add you as an extra panelist. And oh, no, it hasn't got you on as a panelist. Okay, so I've added you there with your Gmail address, and let's see if that works. Um, if possible, use a completely different computer, but may not be uh, likely. Okay, so yeah, um, let's let, let's just uh, if, please do jump in if you've got any questions or if you'd like to just you know chat this through or whatever. Uh, please do. I'll give you some basic background on how the the program itself is going to work. Um, I don't know Tony's already signed up. Um, it's four other people who not signed up. Um, so it's going to. The plan is it's going to start on Monday, and it's going to run for 28 days. So basically, what we've what we've done is we've broken down the 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 what seems like a massive transformation in life, we've broken it down into four weeks. The first week is about really getting your head around your own personal power yeah the authority that you have to be the author of your life right because um, I mean we'll go over a lot of this stuff in much more detail because we've got 28 days we break it right down so week one is about really kind of owning your own your own power um, and one of the things we'll look at for example is that uh, where you are right now who you are right now is not just a product of your past, right? There are things you can't change. You can't change your DNA. You can't change your parents. You can't change anything that's happened in the past, right? And all of those things, your culture, your religion, your schooling, you know, the embarrassing thing that happened at school when you were in, you know, primary and, you know, you wanted the ground to swallow you up. All of those things inform who we are now, but they don't dictate who we are now, right? They're all there, they're all part of the rich makeup that we are. In addition to that, we are also, we also dwell in the future as well, right? Simply, I'm not, I'm not getting all weird and woo here, so this is real stuff. This is the fact that we have dreams, we have hopes, we have desires, we have this, this you know, I'm hoping that the reason you guys are all on this call is that you, there is a something in you that is saying, there is more. There is more for me in this life. I know that there is something more that I am supposed to or being called to do and achieve and be. It's like, you know, I, I love the quote from Marianne Williamson that says that you're playing small does not serve the world. You know, our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we are adequate beyond measure. And I believe that. Um, so, you know, we are here riding this, you know, micro thin bubble, which is the present moment. And that's the only time when anything can happen. Nothing can happen in the past. Nothing can happen in the future. Things can only happen right now. We can only change things right now. So the, the power that we have, because there's, there's a million moments in every minute, you know, the power that we have is incredible. But for whatever reason, we are, we are not, we don't feel completely able to step right into exactly what we want. Okay. Now, basically, we're going to spend four weeks unpicking the reasons why 
that we're not don't feel able to do that um, we're going to try and you know hit those things off um, and and literally just put one foot in front of the other because that's what it's about and it's an experiential uh, course this is not something that I, mean, I could I could write it up as a book and it would probably be a decent book but you don't this, this isn't an intellectual thing this this is a heart thing and, and the mind's very powerful and I think a big part of what we're going to do is get the mind to get the hell out of the way because the mind very often doesn't help yeah, it says things like, well, we tried that before. You remember when you were 11 and it didn't work, so let's best not, let's not do that again, right? The fear. So fear is one of those things that stops us, one of the biggest things that stops us. Uh, so the second week is literally about building your dream, really getting deep down and dirty into feeling what that the tracing that feeling back through your life, you know, spotting those signposts that they've been along the way in your life. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll, let me share a few with you, just, just by way of illustration. This is nothing to do with you, right? This is completely personal. That's, that's the whole thing, you know. You're going to bring you. You're going to bring you in all your glory and all your messiness and fuzziness and you know, all of this wonderful stuff. And we're going to work with that. Okay, so let me just back up slightly. How because we were talking about how it works, remember? Okay, so um, how it works, there'll be a short video of me talking about the thing for the day. That shouldn't take too long, it could be five, 10 minutes, something like that. Every day is gonna have an exercise and you're invited to do the exercise. Right? There's nothing compulsory in the entire program. You know, you can pay your money and do nothing at all if, if you wish, if that's, if that's what you wanna do, and that's absolutely fine. Um, but we're, we're inviting you to follow through this particular structure, this particular process, because it's what we think is going to work. Having said that, this is the pri uh, a, a pilot program, so there's going to be an awful lot of interaction. Okay. So there's going to be an exercise, literally something that you get a notebook and, you know, write stuff down in a notebook and read it for yourself. You don't have to share any of that stuff. It's completely up to you. In addition to that, we're going to be having live facilitation sessions every single day. Um, depending on how many people we've got, I mean, you know, we've got, we, we circle the whole globe. So um, the plan was if, if we do fill 20 slots, then we'll probably run three sessions throughout the day. Um, literally just dial in, join the room, and we just, we just talk the stuff through. Whatever's going on, we're going to talk it through. Sharon will be using the clean language, uh, symbolic modeling stuff. We will all be picking up on those skills throughout the process as well, I, I hope. Um, and that, that's it. Um, you know, if we need one-to-one -one sessions, then we set up one-to-one -one sessions. Right? Where Sharon and Eric and I are absolutely here um, to, to help you in whatever way we can, if it is in our power to step into your full power, your full authority of, of your life, and to do what it is that you need to do to, to get it. I'm, I'm not kidding here at all. We're talking about, you know, if I can introduce you to somebody that I know, I will make that introduction. You know, if, if I can advise you, if I can give you ideas, if you want to brainstorm some stuff, I will do that. And Eric and Sharon are the same. Right? This, is, this is not like a course that you take. Um, I'm starting to think of this more like the beginning of a, a movement. And, you know, right now it's very small. Um, but, you know, if it, if it works, and I hope it works, then I would like to be rolling it out. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Um, okay, excuse me. I'm not used to talking that much. So, uh, we're going through the weeks. Okay, so week one, it's all about understanding your power and your responsibility. And it, it cuts both ways. You know, it's the, the weird thing is that, you know, when you fully appreciate that, hey. Oh, my gosh. Oh, brilliant. We have Sharon. Okay, cool. Um, let me, um, I'm going to finish wrapping up this little thing that I was saying. You can probably then come cancel. Oh, you've canceled the phone. That's cool. Okay. So. Responsibility in your life, 
I was talking about. Yeah, it's it cuts both ways. It's a double-edged sword, which is a metaphor, and um, the 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 bad news is, in in a way, if you want to call, we'll be talking a lot about good and bad. So, but you know, we'll work with this. Um, on one hand, we what we need to do is we need to completely, fully step into total responsibility, total ownership, right? The relationships in your life that have gone south, right? Completely our responsibility, okay? It's just, so this is all we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna be, you know, giving you ideas to try on for size, see if they fit, okay? And um, so, for, I mean, that's just an example, right? So the, the where we are right now in life is a product of only two things. Right, things that you can't have, can't change and things that you can. Things that you can't change, you can't change. Things that you can change and things that you have had influence over in your life so far, um, you have therefore chosen. You know, if you could have influence, if you could have changed it, then you know you've chosen what you've chosen. Whether you've chosen it consciously or you've chosen it unconsciously it doesn't matter. But the thing about stepping into this, you know, magicianship or your, uh, you know, mastery or warrior status or whatever you want to call it, um, it really depends on owning that, that truth, having it as a truth for you. We're also going to be talking about truth, you know, small truth versus um, the big truth and ultimate truth. Um, so, you know, it, that's kind of tough. It's a, it's a tough thing to accept that the reason I am the weight that I am now is completely down to how much exercise I've cho chosen to do and how much food and beer I've, I've managed to put in my mouth, right? I am, I, and this is the thing, I am the perfect weight right now. I am exactly the weight that I'm supposed to be right now because I've chosen what I've eaten, okay? It doesn't matter if my wife wants to cook, you know, something that's whatever. Yeah, I, I still choose to eat it, okay? So we're talking about complete 100% responsibility, which can seem like a bit of a downer until you realize that, you know, the reason why your life is the way it is is because you've chosen it. And then behind that, you suddenly go, oh. So the reason why, you know, my, what, my life could be anything if I choose it. So that's, that's, the, that's the other side of the thing. So week one, all about that power stuff, right? So we're going to do that over seven days. S short exercises, nothing too stressful. Week two, uh, building the dream. So really understanding it, tracking it back, really embodying it, um, and, and choosing it. I mean, choice the power of your personal word, capital W word, is very, very central to this. You know, the fact that you get to be who you say you are, if you can do it authentically, right? We, we, we don't do any of this like, you know, I am the world's greatest racing driver. And if you say it enough times or if you chant it or whatever, or you say it to enough different gods, then it will become true. That's bullshit. We know that's bullshit, right? But if you... If you say to yourself, I am a, you know, caring husband and father, um, if you believe it, right, then, then you are. You have the power. You have that power to say, I am. And the words I am have tremendous power. By the way, by the sound of it, I don't think Eric's going to make it on the call, so you're stuck with just me, me and Sharon. Um, so you get a two inputs rather than three, but I think this will be fine. Uh, week three is all about constraints, right? Again, two types of constraints in life. Real ones, like I have children, I am legally responsible for feeding my children, right? I have dogs, I'm legally responsible for them. Um, there are real constraints, right? I can only work so many hours in the day. If I do more than that, I will become tired and grumpy or I'll get ill right? Real constraint. 
On the other hand, there's an awful lot of constraints in our life, i.e. the reasons why we haven't, why we aren't right now achieving exactly what we want to be experiencing and achieving that are not true. They're not real. They're fears, false expectations appearing real. Um, so we, we're spending a whole week on that stuff. Okay. Um, and then finally, the, in the, the final week, the fourth week is, is about action. You know, we're going, you know, classic, break this big ass, scary ass thing down into manageable things and just take one foot and put it in front of the other. And we're going to look at some really, really fun stuff as well. Like, um, we've got a whole day on asking for help, right? There's a paradox in all of this. You are completely 100% responsible for your life and there's help, okay? Nothing wrong with asking for help. If, there, if there's somebody who has knowledge that you want, ask them, right? There's one, one, very few things we know absolutely for true in this world and one of them is that if you never ask, the answer is always no. Right? If, you, if you want something, if something can be useful to you, reach out to that person, but not in a kind of a needy way. Because I believe, I mean, I've got people lined up. Believe me, I've got, um, for, for this house I want to build, and I want to build it next summer, by the way. This is, this is my project. Because we're all going to be working on our own stuff with this as well. Um, I want to build this thing next summer. Um, I need to shut up in a minute and pass over to, to Sharon. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to shut up now because I think we've scheduled this to run for 45 minutes. I don't know if it's going to stop on us, but we'll see. So Sharon, hi. Well done for making it on the call. Hi, Ben. <laughs> so, um, so great. Uh, thank you guys for being um, patient. I, I was running a marathon there for about, as Tony pointed out, about 20 minutes, eight minutes. So I'm glad to be here. And, um, so the call, the call is scheduled for about 45 minutes. So I'm wondering if you would all be okay with going over about five or six minutes. Just kind of let me know in the chat window if that would be all right. Because um, I know your time is valuable. And we don't want to push too long. And um, also with that, if there was somebody that's attending the, the webinar that would like to do just a mini client session, we'll just keep it down to about 10 minutes just so you can get like a really brief taste. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. He, he may be grumpy tomorrow, but he's willing to stay a little bit longer. So I uh, appreciate that. Well, and, uh, Tony's in Queensland, Australia. So oh my gosh, yes. Between nine or 11 hours different from me. So we, you know, the, the, oh, no. that's some dedication. Okay, so let's, let's get the show on the road. Is there anybody that would like to come on the line? Um, uh, ben can bring you up. And um, we can do a brief client session, or I can work directly with Ben if that's easiest and quickest. Um, Seriously, this this is a good opportunity, guys. Uh, you know, first person to jump in and say yes. Or Tony, was that you? Was that you stepping up? <laughs> you can only type. Oh, okay, everyone in this house. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so we've got okay. Nick and Norm and Tim and Aisha. Um, is would anyone like to, you know, feel, experience this, what, what I've spent the first 15 minutes talking about? Don't have to at all. Remember, okay. the, whole, the whole thing it, about this is that uh, this is entirely voluntary. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> so, Ben, <laughs> let's just go ahead and work with you. And, yeah. um, and like I framed it with Eric yesterday, um, who was kind enough to be a client, Rather than um, when I ask you what you'd like to have happen, it being in a really broad context, the way we'll do it with the participants um, in the workshop, um, I'm just going to say, like, I'm just going to let's frame it in what would you like to have happen um, in regard to this program? And I know you've talked a lot about it, but this might help provide some clarification as well. Hmm. Uh, so when doing this program, what would you like to have happen? I would like to witness um, the light come on for people. We can see it, see it in the face. We, you know, what, what we saw in Eric's face when, when he did the session with you yesterday. 
Great. And you'd like to witness the light come on for people. And when you witness anything else about that witness, uh, I will be filled with pride and I'll be filled with joy um, to be able to share that with another human being. Mm. Yeah, totally, totally. It's, it's, it's about inspiration. Mm. I, want to share, I want to share the inspiration. And filled with pride and filled with joy and inspiration. And when you have inspiration like that, whereabouts is that inspiration? It's right up and down, right through the core of me. And, and it, right up and down. Yeah, it feels like my, I can breathe through the top of my head. And right up and down and through the core of you and like you can breathe in the top of your head. Yeah, mm. and it's light. And, and light. And when it's light and it's all up and down, like you can breathe through the top of your head, does that have a shape or size? No, it's if, if if anything, it just goes up. Mm. But so maybe I'm thinking like a kind of a spiritual connection. Um, mm. But you know, also I'm, I mean, I'm imagining someone's face, and we're in a chat session, you know, video chat, and it is, it's just it's just a special moment when mm. when we go. I can do that. Mm. I can do that. Yeah. It's a special moment and it goes up and it's light. And what kind of light is that light when your inspiration goes up like that? It's, uh, it's light that uh, doesn't go out. It, it's, it's, it's an infinite source of light. Mm. An infant source of light. Yeah, it doesn't cost anything. It's not a zero sum thing. It's like the the more of that light that we can create, the more we can still create. And when you have light that goes up and down like that, and it's like breathing from the top of your head, anything else about that when breathing from the top of your head? It just it just feels right. It, it feels like that's what I want to do. And that light, that inspiration, and the joy. Yeah. And that costs nothing. It's just, it's just, you know, pure creativity. Unlocking and, creativity. I love it. And that's your witness when it's like that. And you know, because you can see it, and it's like, I can do that. Mm. Yeah. And, and I remember. It means, you know, I get to remember as well that what I can do, how much I can do. And it, it's, just, it's just too exciting and too addictive not to want to keep doing this with people. Mm. And I just hope that people want to do it. You know, and and if we work with one or two or three people, that's fine. And we will try and help achieve whatever transformation those people want. And then I want to do it again. Mm. I want more people to do it. And take all the time you need to get to know more about that witness and that light as it goes up and that inspiration and joy, and knowing that when you're on a webinar or working with a client and you have that noticing, and would this be a good place to stop? Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Great. So mm -hmm. short and sweet. <laughs> so does anybody have any um, questions or um, noticings about what was happening with Ben or the kinds of questions that I was asking? You can type it in. 
or you know say can i talk and i'll i'll add you to video as well that's working yeah. today it wasn't working yesterday sharon i don't know why <laughs> so it, i mean it's really interesting i mean uh, i hope you guys noticed that the words that sharon used i mean i think the word witness maybe i used that i don't remember using that word but you know i think it's like all the words that sharon used were either these very very clean non-invasive question structures and they were using the 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 symbols that i'd provided you know mm -hmm. that light that breathing out of your top of the, your head that's a metaphor and mm -hmm. it doesn't actually happen you know i'm not a whale yeah so one of the reasons we we do this symbolic modeling the way we do is that it begins to rather than just having a vague idea or a large concept like a witness is it all right if i go ahead and use the material from our little session ben yeah. oh, of course yeah. Yeah. okay of course is um is that it begins to give people a possibility of embodying their actual experience so rather than just working with a concept or an idea um, i like to say that it's easier to change a tire than it is to change an idea um, you begin to get an embodied tangible experience of what you want and when you have a tangible embodied experience of what you want you know more quickly when you're getting closer and when it actually happens um, so that's part of the reason um, that's part of the reason that we we do this okay so um, hang on here I'm just seeing the chat window so I always have, yeah so from Tony I always have trouble when I'm asked where I feel it um, and I've only done this once with the strongest childhood memory you know that's not that's not unusual Tony and and one thing I know about Ben is he embodies things really quickly so it was a pretty safe bet to to go into a where um, something was with him um, somebody else I might have to do a lot more development and really kind of like flesh out the the landscape the 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 imagery or the vocabulary before they begin to have an embodied sense so that's not uncommon and it's just working with the person that's in front of you I just happen to know something about Ben and um, Norm does this actually help you define a path um, I have so many things that I'd like to do. Yeah, but I'm, I'm a multi-focuser as well. And, um, and this, just this question, what would I like to have happen or what would I like to have happen right now has been so helpful in me, at least defining in the moment. And this is a very systemic model. So when you pick one that you're most passionate about at that moment, uh, what will happen is as you develop it, some of the attributes and the, the useful resources in that particular area will begin to spill over and have a positive effect on other areas of your life so it's not so much that you have to choose one and just stick with it it's a bit like choosing one and um, uh, in the world of physicality you might look at it like when we begin to walk and become more fit our sex life gets better you know um, how we eat what we eat often changes a little bit our vitality goes up sometimes our sleep improves so it's a bit systemic like that only from a um, I don't want to say a psychological viewpoint because it's not quite that simple but from a, a deep deep point of how we make meaning and how we create associations in our lives I I hope that's a little bit helpful norm um, yeah and thank you guys for the questions that's that's great <laughs> really appreciate it yeah and I totally get the I have so many things that I like to do and I don't know where to focus and you know Ben, ben and I are and we're... and Eric I have to we have to bring Eric in now as well because you know Eric Eric contacted me Eric's the inspiration for this whole course by the way Eric contacted me a couple of months ago and we've had a lot of communications and you know I asked Eric to to go through you know the full circuit questionnaire which basically just does a complete DNA analysis of uh, you know, this this project that you want to do whatever it is you want to take to market and you know Eric you 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 told me about like it had to be five or six different things <laughs> exactly Eric's got, Eric's got more passions than than you know anyone music coaching Serving people through law, which was your your previous profession for many years, um, photography, 
photography. And something to the Alzheimer's work as well. Um, exactly. So, but, you know, where are you with all those different things? I mean, what can, what can we, you know, help, what, 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 what can we offer Norm about how, you know, finding, finding your path? It, it doesn't need to be one thing, does it? I don't think, it, in my opinion, it doesn't have to be one thing. You do have to get focused, and you have to have, find out what your driving passion is. So we both know that my driving passion is helping people. I mean, and that's the underlying key in all of those, all the other passions that I have, all the other venues of expression that I have. Those are venues of expression that I will actually use in my transformational facilitation. And so, but where, when we were interacting, the thing that um, you helped me most with was um, being true to my own passion um, that as I continue to move forward on my own path, that I really focus deeply and fully on transformational facilitation. And that's, no, and that's what I call it. It's like, you know, whether you use the term coaching or whatever, I believe that my role is to help people transform and to facilitate that transformation. As you know, this is all about pulling, helping you pull stuff out of yourself, help us listening to you is like so that we can hear you and you can hear yourself and then we help facilitate. Um, so um, I think it's quite normal to have many passions and many interests. And, but I think that when you really focus, you'll listen to what's inside and you'll see where you need to go. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Now, we, we do need to wrap up in a couple of minutes. But uh, I'm just thinking back for myself and the journey that I've been on recently. About a year ago, I wrote a post about finding your why. And when I looked back at, at previous times in my life and I'd felt clarity, energy, purpose in my life, and I said, well, what do all those things have in common? What I got for me personally was what this is what I'm about. Okay, what I'm about is... Um, to explore and share ideas of how, for how we communally, communally, we together can do things better. That's what inspires me, right? And that's the same thing that has been popping up in marketing, in this program, in inventions and all these different things I've tried to do. I'm driven by how can we together do things better? That's what's important to me, right? And knowing that, really owning that, doesn't matter how it's expressed almost as long as I really feel that that true purpose is expressing itself, you know, to its maximum potential. So um, hopefully we're all going to get online quicker. We're going to do the same kind of thing again tomorrow. So anyone who wants to come along again tomorrow, please do. And we'll hear, I hope, a lot more from Eric as well. So Sharon, yeah. Eric, do you have any closing words? I do. So um, I missed a Norm's... Um Norm's offered to be a client in the um, Q&A window. So um, I, I did respond, but I don't know if you got it, Norm. If you're, if you're interested in attending tomorrow, if you have the time, I would love to um, have you as the client that I work with. So, so please just either show up or let us know, and um, I think that'd be great. So, um, and uh, to Nick, um, thank you so much for the feedback. And um, clean questions can be used to model out what your customer wants. I have, um, uh, and this may not be the webinar for you to, the, the program for you to attend, um, but I do have somebody who does um, event coordination and event building, and he has almost doubled his income by being able to model out what his clients want really quickly without having to do so much back and forth and, and error repair. So, um, just a little bug in your bonnet, but if you contact me at cleancoach at iCloud.com, I'm happy to send you some resources um, that you can access for free that uh, might begin to get you started asking some of these questions in, in your work. So, um, super. Uh, oh, yeah. Thanks, Norm. So, you got it now? I hope to see you tomorrow. I, I know. I'm, I feel like I'm talking to the air, but um, thank you guys for typing. It's really helpful. <laughs> thanks, everyone, for being on the call. It's been really good. Um, hope you've enjoyed it and uh, yeah we're on same time tomorrow if you've got any questions at all free feel free to email me back I can direct um, 
emails to to Eric and Sharon as well. So yeah, thanks again. We'll, we'll stop. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.